A question that many businesses face is, should they use regular shipping transportations or faster shipping transportation that costs more? And the answer to this question depends on the cost of holding on to your goods in a longer period of time. And this makes more sense if you think that payment for the goods that are in your possession is given to you when they arrive to the, uh, to the customer, to the client. So the situation is usually like this. There is a distance and you are here and your customer is there and um, he or she will give you your money when the goods arrive to her hand. So while the goods are in your hand or during the transportation, you are responsible for the cost of goods or the goods belong to you. The cost that applies to ownership of the goods can be cost of capital. For example, you want to sell these goods to that customer that is being transferred to the customer or sold to the customer. Um, you have bought these goods by a loan from a bank and you are maybe paying, I don't know, 20% interest for those goods. Uh, or uh, while you are in possession of those goods that you have not transferred the ownership to the client yet, you have to pay insurance. Which is usually a proportion of the cost of the good. Or you have to pay warehousing for it. And let's call all of these costs holding cost. And the alternative is to transfer the ownership to the client and transport it to the hands of clients or get, um, let's say if you have rented some machinery, uh, get relieved from the, the rental as soon as possible. So while the rental is in your hand, then you have to pay this holding cost. While you have the ownership of the goods, you have to pay these holding costs. And now the transportation usually has a time of delivery. And during that delivery time, you are responsible for the holding costs. So let's say the parameters for transportation are time and the price. And usually those transportation means that or transportation companies who are uh, transporting faster so when the time is fast the price is high usually and when the time is slow the price is low but the answer to the question what should i do with this good is not obvious it depends to the holding cost and the change in the price uh, so the, to answer the question, we have to do actually some calculations, which are not that difficult. And I will show you in an example. So let's assume that the value of the goods that are in your hand, it can be rental, it can be that you own them, but you are responsible for them, is let's say $500,000. And let's assume that the combined cost of holding to these goods, the cost of capital, insurance, warehouse, and so forth, is about 30% of the value. Of the goods. Is the holding cost. 
Now the options that we have, let's assume are these. Let's say one company says that I will transport the goods to the customer by ship and it will take time and money. It would take 30 days and you have to pay me uh, let's say $1,000 and there's another company who says that I will ship by airplane it will take two days but then you have to pay me $5,000 now the question is that is it justified for us to pay that extra $4,000 and <clears throat> go with the fast shipment. So to answer that question, we have to find out how much is the holding cost during the time difference. Okay. So, um, so let's think about what is the holding cost. In this case, the time, if it is 30 day and two day, uh, we have to convert 30 days and two days. Uh, we have to convert the 30% per year to a daily rate. So we have to pay $500,000 multiplied by 0.3 for a year. Therefore, for every day, we have to pay this much. So this is the cost of holding per day. And that turns out to be 410.95. Let's consider it as $411 per day. So now it's easy to make a decision. The, the fastest transportation method saves me 28 days. And in every of those 28 days, I will not pay $411. In other words, the cost of holding during the transportation is 28 multiplied by 411. And if that is more than my saving, then I'm encouraged to pay that extra uh, money and uh, transport it to the hand of the customer as soon as possible. So 28 multiplied by 411. So uh, if 28 more days, I am still the owner of these goods and I have to take care of the cost of capital and cost of that holding uh, cost of warehousing and cost of insurance, I have to pay 11508 And of course, because this is bigger than the difference of $4,000 for expedited shipment, of course I will pay the extra $4,000 and I will not hold on to the goods for another 30 days. Of course, if the shipment time uh, of with the ship it would be you know much faster let's say it, if it was 15 days then this whole story might be different if it was 10 days the story might be different and i would make it a different decision but if the choice is between these options uh, then uh, obviously we can choose the one that uh, is the cheapest more strategic way of thinking about this is using a decision tree because in real life you may find that you know for your decision to what to do there are more than two options there may be multiple options and then let's go will you go with the uh, let's call them different types of transport transportation mode one transportation mode two transportation mode three and transportation mode four. 
And for each one of these, we have to think of the expected monetary value of that decision. So if I want to answer the same question in this way, uh, using the decision tree, I would say, okay, the first option that I have is that I will pay $1,000. Uh, I will pay $1,000 for transportation. And then I have to hold on to my goods 30 days. And for each day, I am responsible for $411 per day uh, of holding cost. Uh, cost of capital, cost of warehousing, storage, insurance, and so forth. And that means then my total cost would be, you know, 11,508 plus 1,000. So that would be 12,508. If I choose transportation type 2, uh, I have to pay 5,000. But then I have to pay only two days of that $411 of holding cost, which is 822 plus 500 would be 1,322. And then for every one of these scenarios, you will think about what are the possibilities. If the question gives you different probabilities, then you will consider the probab. If you go with transportation type one, if multiple things can happen, let's say with the chance of 40%, that may happen, and with the chance of 60%, this may happen, and so forth, you will go through all of the probabilities as well. You will translate all of these possible outcomes with their probabilistic expected monetary value, and then you will make a decision.